seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. There's no there's no words That's on it. Tomorrow. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Thanks again for watching. Fuck it. There's no words on it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. There's no words on it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Take it away. everybody dark horse live episode 47 and it's fucking cold dude i i venture to bet it's cold wherever the fuck you are too it is fucking cold um it's cold in the studio right now we got heaters going but um right off the jump i realized last two weeks ago actually two weeks ago we did not tell the truths on our one two one true threes so real quickly i'm going to tell the truth on the one true threes uh caesar what was your truth? One more time. Cooking with the head chef in Nobu. Cooking with the head chef in Nobu was Caesar's one true story of the three bullshit story or the two, three stories he told. One was true, two were bullshit. Cooking with the Nobu chef was Caesar's true story, and uh, my true story was the Vegas story about um, smoking with uh, Chappelle and Kevin Hart and all those dudes backstage at their comedy show. Uh, every story I told actually was true, but I changed a fraction of it to make it a lie. But uh, the last story was actually true. But we may play that shit again. I don't know. That was a good, that was a good little fucking game. But uh, right off the jump, I think we're going to do something just a little different. Let's go to... Uh, free sh no, let's do uh, what in the actual fuck. What in the actual fuck. What the actual fuck did you just say to me right now? So this week on what in the actual fuck, something's come up. Red hairs. Red hairs is not really a word. I suppose it's a word, but you're referring to like the red hair on the bud. That's that's really stupid thing to say. You say red hairs, bro. This thing's got lots of red hairs. I'm gonna say what in the actual fuck did you just say to me? Because that's what a red hair is. Uh, Redheaded dude. But what you're really looking for, if you want to be proper, is just pistols, dudes. So it's just pistols. It's a withered pistol. It's dried out. It has no THC. It's not crystals and it's not special. And the red hairs aren't awesome. If you have tons of red hairs, it's not awesome. They're just red pistols that have changed color and withered and died. So don't say, dude, this thing's got lots of red hairs. All right. Well, that's what in the actual fuck came up the other day. Um, let's go to free shit. It's free! So I think I have most people hooked up that has won free shit in the past couple shows. If you've won something and I sent you an email and said you won and you don't have a tracking number, get back to me at the email on the bottom of your screen, darkhorsegenetics.live at gmail.com. Uh, I think I have it. Um, if you guys are winning the, the name the tunes, you got to email at that email. Otherwise, it gets hella confusing and they gets, I got them in all kinds of places, DMs and inboxes and all kinds of shit. So just email that you want at the darkhorsegenetics.live at gmail.com and we'll get you sorted. But uh, we're going to play Name That Tune real quick. So first up, we're going to do this for... Who do you want to do it for, Cs? Insta. This one's for Insta. And I'm going to play you a clip, and you got to tell me what the fuck it is for a free pack of Stockton Slap. Stockton Slap, it's free. All right, you ready for this tune?
That's all I'm giving you, just a quick snippet. Quick snippet? You guys can't get that, can you? I'll give you a little more. I really can't but stay. But baby, it's cold you got outside. I've got to go but away. But baby, it's cold outside. The herbal cultivator. Herbal so cultivator. Nice. Cultivator. This song, just like my mother I'm told it's canceled, to folks. You can't play this. We're going to get in trouble. Cannot play this song anymore. And it is fucking cold outside. So really, I'd better scurry. Shut up. Don't well, maybe just a half a drink more. There we go. All right, and uh, that was for Instagram. This one up next is for Twitch. Twitch. This one's for all you Twitchers. Get your fucking twitching fingers ready. All right, I need the name of this song. Come on, so easy, dude. Where you at, Twitch? No. Yeah, Daddy Lynch. Daddy Lynch wins Daddy Lynch. all the time. Daddy Lynch is like a music savant or something. This game's almost not even fair because Daddy Lynch wins all the time. Or he's got like that T1 super fucking internet connection. Daddy Lynch, lovely day. Got it on just like a few chords. This is simple though. You should definitely be able to get this song quickly. So yeah, you won, uh, we'll do uh, Sunny D for you, dude. Sunny D for you, it's a lovely day for your motherfucking ass. All right, stop that shit. Let's go over to YouTube. Last chance here, YouTube, you want to win some shit? Tell me the name of this motherfucking song. ZKZ ZKZ ZKZ's got it More bounce To the ounce Yep I seen it ZKZ ZKZ You're the winner man He knows his funk Alright dude What are we doing on the show today? We're going to teach you dudes how to grow some weed Dark horse style so yeah, if you want that shit, email, bottom of your screen. Don't make it hard on me or it'll be hard for you to get your shit, you know what I mean? All right, let's talk about uh, a little PowerPoint presentation that I made. I just typed this shit up. It's going to be how to grow cannabis like I do, like Dark Horse does, how I was taught. It's not super, super in-depth, but it's the basics. It's the basics, dudes. So if you're on Instagram... Good luck seeing this screen because you're probably not going to see much of it. It would be smart of you on Instagram to click over now to the signature in my, my bio, darkhorse.live. You'll see the full screen. You'll see the, all the tiles. You'll see what the fuck I'm talking about. But uh, with that said, let's go to PowerPoint, how to grow weed like Dark Horse. It's going to be impossible to smoke this joint as I do this, but I will try. All right, so I say that uh, we're going to teach you how we grow. It's more like a starter's guide. This is a starter's guide to do what the fuck we do. That is certainly not the right shit. I just fucked everything up. Hold on. Hold on. This is a live show, and I am a dipshit. So sit with me. Somehow this turned into the dad show. <laughs> the fuck just happened? Let's try this one more time. Wow, what did I do, bros? All right, this will work anyway. I'll make it work. Okay, grow. Let's make sure you're on the PowerPoint there, dipshit. All right, that'd be me. Disclaimer. 
Disclaimer, dudes. There's a tiny guy down here. So tiny guy. You get out of here. Peace. All right. Sorry. Disclaimer. Don't be a dipshit. Don't be a dipshit when you... Every time I do these presentations, I'm not responsible for you being a fucking dipshit. So don't be a dipshit, dude. It's not my fault if you're a fucking dipshit. All right. Moving on. God. Did that just blow your eardrums out like it blew mine out? Holy fucking shit, dudes. We are having all kinds of trouble. Stay with me now. Okay. I'm going to try to do this. It's not breaking news. The breaking news is it's seed germination, the first slide. Okay. Um, <laughs> first slide. Uh, how to start seeds. You, um, can you tell if a seed is male or female? Like, no. I, I think it's hilarious when people... We've had people come up to the booth and shit and been <laughs> like, I can tell if seeds are male or female, dude. Like, I can do it. And I'm like... How how the fuck can you do it? You can't do it. If anyone ever tells you they can tell the seed is female or male just by looking at it, you should laugh at them. It's fucking not. It's not a real thing. Okay. Um, brown seeds, white seeds, tiger stripe seeds, pale seeds. It doesn't matter. I know everyone likes a dark tiger stripe seed. It signifies a nice mature seed. But it, not all plants produce super dark tiger stripe seeds. So. Um, Start them shits. Before you start bitching a storm about, oh, I got this light-colored seed, start them. Trust me. Doesn't, the, the color of the seed doesn't matter as much. Just start them. Um, what matters is, did the seed go the full term? Meaning, is the seed mature? Did it go the entire way? It could still be light, but if it went the full term, then it's been loaded with the carbohydrates to sustain it for 30 days after it sprouts. If it didn't go the full term and it's immature or pale, I shouldn't say pale, but uh, immature, seed, then it absolutely will not have enough energy to sustain it for 30 days once it sprouts. You ever start a seed that just falls right over right away? Uh, that's what you're looking at there. Okay. I'm scared to push down because something might happen. Okay. <laughs> uh, here's how to start a seed. So you um, soak the seed to activate the starting process. It's real simple shit, but you just throw in a cup of water. Tap water, it doesn't matter. pH doesn't really matter right now. You can add a drop of herb natural if you'd like, or shout out to herb. I really like herb. Um, but after 24 hours, you um, basically you're taking them out of there. I would say after 12, you can kind of like swirl them a little bit and try to, they, they'll float initially, but then um, after a little while, they'll uh, most of them will sink. And um, you can also give them a little, like a little swirl and that'll help them sink sometimes. But usually after 24 hours, they've sunk. See, if you, if you can see that picture, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a little white, it looks like a white slit in the seeds. That's actually the tails just starting to emerge coming out of the side of the seed. Uh, tips here, don't touch the seeds with your bare hands. You have oils on your hands, and you can damage the seed. Don't mess with them. Don't fucking touch them with your hands. And I say you can swirl the water a little bit, but don't stick your fingers in there and touch them and dot them, and don't just leave them be. Uh, pH at this stage, as I said, doesn't really matter. You just we're just basically adding moisture to activate the seed, start the process. Paper towel method. So after after a day, you have the choice. You go paper towel method. Or you can go straight to soil method. Um, I prefer straight to soil, but we'll talk about paper towel method because it's widely used. One thing about paper towel method is, like, I would assume the only reason people use paper towel method today is because. They, they're looking to identify weaker, like shittier seeds from shittier breeders. If you look at agriculture across the field, nobody starts seeds in, t in toilet paper or tissue paper or starts them like this and then transplants them into their other medium. It's just a complete other step that nobody fucking does except cannabis dorks. But you can do this this way if you'd like. And all you've got to do is uh, damp your paper towel, carefully place the seeds in between the folded paper towel, place a Ziploc bag or a sealed Tupperware. I like to put that on top of like a cable box or somewhat slightly warm and dark. Uh, you don't want it super hot. I don't like heat pads either because that shit will get too hot and dry your paper towel right out. Um, carefully check every few days until the seeds have grown about a one inch tap root. And then you're going to carefully move your seedlings into soil, your hydro setup, whatever it may be. But um, again, uh, this one, I would say it... It, it works best, like if you're, if you're buying high quality seeds, you can put them straight into the soil or dirt and it's going to work just like everyone sows agriculture for a thousand years. Um, but if you want, you can go ahead and go this route. Another tip if you do this is, uh, I picked this up from Serious Seeds, is hang them in like a chip clip vertically up, and then they will, uh, the tap roots will grow down, straight down instead of curling all over the place and going nuts on you. And uh, you can then, um, basically, it's easier to keep your seeds separated 
and the gravity will take place and the tap roots will go straight down if you hang them vertical using like a chip clip with a magnet on it and then ma um, clip it where it's hanging. Okay. Straight to soil method. This is the method that I prefer. Um, just soak them for 24 hours and stick them. Soak them and stick them, dudes. It's that simple. Dudes and dudettes, uh, I'd say stick them in your preferred media. I like soilless media being Sunshine 4 or Promix. Soilless media is basically dirt, but it has no nutrients in it, so it's a 0, 0, 0 NPK. Um, seeds don't need a lot of food to start. All They already have their food, so you don't need a hot soil. All you really need is a bland, soil, uh, you know, soilless mix. You can use a seed starting soil if you'd like. A lot of those are higher in phosphorus to help rooting and promote you know, growth, but I would just a bland soil, a 0, 0, 0 soil is the way to go and stick it about a quarter inch under the soil. Don't bury the fuck out of the seed, just lightly under the soil, stick it. Again, don't touch it with your bare hands. After the seed sprouts, provide a light, provide light so that they don't stretch like crazy on you because they will start to run. So put a light over it, it doesn't have to be a super strong light, but get a light over the seedlings once they start to sprout. And then provide a fan, this is another key thing. If you put a fan on your seedlings, you don't want a big fan, but just a fan on your seedlings, it will get them moving a little bit and it'll uh, build up the cell walls and it'll make it, they'll strengthen the stalks so they don't want to fall over on you. Sometimes seedlings are really, some, some people like use a bamboo stick to kind of tie them up or like, you know, hold the seedling up. But really the best thing I think is just introduce a little bit of air, you know, and don't blow it directly on them off a wall or something. But if you can get them, the um, seedlings to move a little bit with the air movement, then you've, that's what's the target. Um, pro tip on this deal, Water, water with a turkey baster um, or a spray bottle because once you plant these seeds, if you go in there with a cup of water and just dump it on there, it's gonna, the seed's going to move all over the place on you and you're going to soak it and it's going to go up and down and be buried further down or slide left or right. We're just trying to keep the soil moist and damp. Uh, keep the soil most moist, not soaking, not dry, just evenly moist. Um, again, after the seed sprouts, you go with light air movement. Seed already has 30 days of food within the collie so the seed leaves, the first set of true leaves you see, that's the food source for 30 days. You don't feed the plant, you don't do any of that, you just let it grow. Um, use it Again, use a turkey baster or like a spray bottle and just mist the top of the soil and let that soak down. Um, don't go in there with a torrential rain pour trough pour because you're going to fuck up your seedlings. They have no root. That's The root's not you know strong into the soil, so if you... You can, you can drown them, drench them, fuck them all up real quick with a heavy water. Um, you might have to remove a stuck seed husk from the seedling. Uh, that's when like the, the seed shell, it's, a, it's an incorrect term, but it's a husk. If it, uh, sometimes it'll hang onto the tips of the leaves. So you may need to come in as carefully as you can and try to help that plant out and remove that seed husk off of there. And when you see the seed husk fall off the seedlings, try to grab them if you can because they're acidic. It's not like crazy acidic, not going to like fuck you up. But if you can, grab those because it's just going to create little uh, acid, acidic little spots of the soil. So scoop those little uh, shells up if you can. All right. So now we're going to veg. Um, one thing I will say about this presentation is, is I kind of spent the bulk of the energy on uh, dry ha harvest, cure, storage, because I think most people know how to grow cannabis decently and they have the basics to it but most people fuck up the end so uh, we're going to kind of go through veg and flour kind of gloss over it and not in a great detail but um, we're going to spend a little bit more time in detail on I think on the finishing of the product uh, again veg this stage you want around 55 70 percent humidity although I get away with much less here in Colorado but uh, after about 14 days in your red cups after you've got your seedlings going you want to transplant those into one to three gallon pots now here is another thing, if you're starting seeds in the regulars, a lot of times you don't know if they're male or female, so don't waste soil by transplanting all of them into big pots, because half of them are probably going to be males, and then you're going to cut them out and throw them away, and you wasted half your soil. So I would say if you're sexing plants, just use a one gallon pot so that you can then introduce them into a flower to see what's what, and then um, once they show pre-flower or show sex, you can transplant them into a five from there. Uh, it's just a little tip that you don't waste soil if you're if you're sexing plants. You don't necessarily up pot everything right away because, you know, the, some of the males are obviously going to go. Um, veg time can be as long as you want. If you're starting plants indoors to go outside, the bigger the better. But if you're growing indoors, remember your light penetration depth is probably no more than three feet. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to grow a 12-foot Christmas tree inside your house 
if your grow light is only giving you about three feet of light penetration, if it's only, you know, really reaching in about three feet. So the idea is, is, you know, don't grow a monster plant inside if the light isn't going to reach the bottom half of the plant. It doesn't make sense to spend that time, energy, and effort to veg plants bigger than they need to be. There's no money in veg, as I said many times. Get the shit into flower. Um, after 30 days, I begin a, a schedule, a feeding schedule of feed, feed, water. Feed, feed, water. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. I use age-old organics, organic grow in the, in the grow stage. I like age-old organics. It's a non-paid plug. They, they don't pay me. I just fucking use it. I tell people I like it. My wheat tastes good because I use age-old organics. And I use the sunshine and I use the 20% earthworm castings um, for a soil base. Um, but, um, yeah, I definitely, you can use whatever nutrient line you like, but I recommend organic. But don't mix the nutrient lines because they're formulated to work together in many cases. So you don't want to buy some grow from this company and a bloom from that company and a, I don't know, some sort of booster from that company. It's like you're going to fuck yourself up by buying, stick within the same line. It's generally a smart move. Um, <coughs> This is sucker buds. Sucker buds is important. Um, I should, probably should have had a better picture of this, but this is an important topic I want to talk about. You can remove your sucker bud sites every three weeks in veg. So what we're talking about when I say sucker bud site is the plant will focus almost all of its energy towards growing the bottom half of your plant. If you look at the bottom half of your plant right now, the very closest to the soil, the stalks, you're going to see all kinds of new growth where they're starting to shoot nodes up and all this, you know, uh, there'll even be bud sites and stuff down there. What you want to do is pull those off, pull the bud site off, pick it with your leaves, pinch it right off. And you're going to do that up about six to eight inches of your, of the base of your plant going up your branches. You're kind of thinning out everything in the middle and the bottom down there. Trust me, it seems weird to go to your plant and start pulling stuff off the bottom, but everything that you pull off the bottom will come back on the top. That's the rule. So as in, and we're in veg still here, but the idea is, is I want to, I don't really want a bunch of focused growth on the lower stuff. Um, I'm trying to get my three or four branches after I top it and I want to shoot it up and I don't want to spend a lot of energy on the lower growth. So if you can clean out the bottom part of your plant a little bit, it will accelerate the vertical growth up top also. Um, I'll explain sucker buds a little bit more flower also. <clears throat> I like to take a top clone after the fourth or fifth node creates a bush plant uh, rather than a tall Christmas tree. So the idea is if you clone after the fourth node, you'll see that you'll get four or five branches that come up, you know, and you'll have a nice bush plant. If you don't top your plant at all and you just let it go straight up, a lot of plants will grow like a Christmas tree shape. And uh, that's not very manageable for indoor growing. So I like to do a, uh, a, a top cl clone off the, the fourth or fifth node every time. Uh, it creates the bushy plant. Watch your PPMs, don't go crazy. Like start at about 500 ppm and rise it to about 800 ppm towards the end of veg. Transplant into a five gallon bucket about a week before you go into flower. It's really that simple. Like veg, you just sort of sit back and watch the girls grow. Don't go crazy with it. Just they will grow. Give them light, give them air, and give them fucking some light feed. Uh, I like to run 18.6, but commercially I run 24.7. It's just I don't want to mess with the timer malfunctioning or anything. But I do like to introduce darkness to add a little bit of photosynthesis to the to the cycle. Um, but that's veg. Flowering. Again, if you're on IG, you probably can't read this, but uh, switch over to the signature in the live and you can see all this stuff. Flower. Um, for longer flowering sativas or longer flowering strains, I like to kickstart with 48 hours in the dark. It seems to help trigger the plants, keeps them a little more squat. Um, I don't do it on everything. I just kind of do it on stuff that I know runs a long time. Your humidity should be not blinding, should be winding. With the, with the, should, your humidity should be winding scale down. So basically you're winding your humidity down as you flower. You start around 55% flower and you should be ending anywhere between 30 and 40 at the time of harvest. So the idea is when you're early in flower, you have a little bit more humidity. As you go through flower, you want to try to cut a little bit of humidity out and try to target around 35-40% humidity at the chop time. That's where, you're, that's where you want to be. When you have big buds, you don't want humidity in the room, obviously. You want to cut it down a little bit because you'll get bud rot and other issues. Um, I use the same feed feed water schedule. After two or three weeks of flower, you got to remove those sucker bud sites again. So this is what I mentioned. Anything you take off from the bottom will be put back on the top colas. 
Most of the plant's energies focus on the bottom lowers of the plant, remove them for better yields and an easier trim drop down the line. That's important because if you don't remove your sucker buds, then when it comes time to harvest, you're going to have all these larfy little nuggets on the bottom of your plant that don't, they're not dense, they don't yield shit. It looks like you have weed there, but you trim it up and you throw it on the scale or whatever, and it's like, it doesn't even register as a weight, and you have a bunch of that little crappy larf stuff. Nobody wants larf. So all that stuff that you can take off on the second or third week, start removing those, those sucker bud sites again where you have on the lower parts of your plants, wherever you have bud sites forming that are way down at the bottom, Pluck them off. Don't pull the whole branch off. Just pluck the individual bud site and let the top cola remain. Um, pull those are all off around the bottom. Let's say six to, depending on the size of your plant, about six to twelve inches up, um, and uh, that will increase the size of your colas on the top. And when it comes time to trim, then you don't have to worry as much about uh, trimming all these shitty lower sucker buddy crappy nuggets. And your nuggets on top will be denser. That's the theory behind um, sucker buds. Um, Trellis or bamboo, your plants for support. Scrog is a sea of green. It's a little bit more of a detailed term, more advanced technique, but essentially scrog is using a trellis net and you're gonna weave your plants over. If you have plants that are of, uh, it's a very good option for taller strains that don't fit your canopy. So if you're growing multiple strains and one shoots up way tall and one's shorter than the other, if you can put a screen at about the even height and weave your tall plant down over and then get your small plant grow into without shadowing each other, you're going to maximize your yield and provide efficiency of lighting to the space that you're trying to grow in. So if your canopy is not even, you should definitely be using a scrog or L, you know, LS, LST with low strength training where you're tying them back down at the minimum. But uh, yeah, keep your canopy even. Um, at week five, I like to thin out my fan leaves. Uh, that may be blocking the lower bud sites. Don't use bud hardeners, PK boosters, overload your plants, keep them under 1100 PPM organic to enjoy the best smoke possible for flavor. Um, if you do what the bottle says for like max yield and go up to like 2000 PPM or whatever the fuck, you're gonna smoke some harsh chemical ass weed. There's just no doubt about it in my mind. I've tried it many times and it tastes like shit. I don't ever go over 1100 PPM at all. I try not to stress my plants out or overload them or you know make them do more than they can. Just let them perform what they have within them. Um, but at week five, if you can thin out some of your bigger fan leaves, it'll help you know your yield and give you a little bit better um, light to the uh, lower nuggets. Um, two weeks before your harvest, you begin flushing. This isn't a key thing. I see most people flush totally wrong. They just switch to water. Uh, don't use any flushing agents. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen like try sweet or something, trying to add sugar to your plants at this time, or trying to use molasses, just flush, just water. Don't use any flushing agents. I think they're kind of gone and the hype is off the market on those, but they were hypey as shit for a while and that's a really stupid idea. Um, just use water, use five times the amount of water as the size of the pot. That's important. Most of you guys don't even like do that or have the concept of that, but five times the amount of the water for the pot size. So if it's a five gallon bucket, you need 25 gallons of water that you're going to flush through the fucking plant to flush it properly. Um, and it takes a minute. You can't just do it in 15 minutes and dump it all on there. You got to pour it on, wait, let it run off, pour it on, wait, let it run off. Go back and do it over and over and over again. And then you're testing your runoff. If you're not sure if you're flushing correctly, your runoff should be clear, not tea color, not yellow, not, it should just be clear. If it's not clear, then you're not flushing enough. Um, but yeah, flush like crazy for the last two weeks, flush, flush, flush. Um, test your runoff if you're check if your plants are being flushed properly. It's more water than you think and it's, or probably are using now. Uh, pro tip on this one again, I'm going to harp on it. Sucker buds. Sucker buds are everything. If you remove those sucker buds, dudes, it's, it's easier to trim. You get more bud and uh, the structure of your plant is beautiful. All right. This is where I was, this is really the meat of what I wanted to talk about. So this one, um, we're talking about how to make your weed not fucking suck after you basically, a lot of guys can get their weed to harvest, but then they fuck it up. And I mean a lot of guys. So let's talk about how to not fuck up your weed once you get it to the end. You spent at least 90 days to get here. Let's not fuck it up. So when you're drying, plants, uh, well, harvest I should say, plants um, will change their color. They'll go yellow. Um, they shed their nutrients. The trikes go clear, milky, tan, dark amber. There's an image on the bottom of your screen. It shows a clear trike, cloudy trike, amber trikes, even a little bit of a mixed one down there. Um, this is personal preference, but clear is racier. Um, amber is more sedative, couch locky. 
Um, but you can kind of find out exactly where you want to go. But you don't harvest off the, the calendar. You don't look at any of that. You go you get a magnifying loop, a 10 times film loop that you can get at any camera store. And you get up close and you look at the heads of your resin glands and your, of your trikes. And when you look at those, you can see what's going on. Um, that's how you harvest. Um, again, now here's, a, here's another factor. There's different methods of harvesting depending on the size of your plant. So if you're outside or greenhouse and you've got monster fucking plants, your lowers can be like two to three weeks behind the top of your plant. So you, a double harvest, and I, I hate to even call it double harvest because just call it multiple harvest. A multiple harvest can give you more yield. I've seen it done three or four times on big monster plants. So basically what you're doing is you're cutting the top off your plant and you're going to harvest that part and leaving the lower growth to have an additional two weeks to finish off. They get more sun, they finish more, and if you have a big enough plant, you can literally section that fucker down three, four times and let the bottom finish out for ultimate yield. Um, it also increases the quality of your bud because if you, de if you take off the top cola and then you let those lowers finish, you, you know, think of the bulk of your pound. Okay, well, the top half of your plant is really good and ready, but the bottom half, three quarters of your plant, or at least half of your plant is immature. So you really want all the bud to be at the mature stage and you know, picked at the right time. So I would recommend if you're doing a big ass plants outside, and you probably already know this, but if you're doing big ass plants outside, multiple harvest is key. Don't just chop the whole fucking thing and hang it up. Um, chop day. So you gotta cut your plants and you hang with your fan leaves on. Don't take all your fans off. Leave all the fans on. We're gonna teach you how to slow dry. The room will spike in humidity for three to five days as you dry. Hang it on a line. If you see the picture here, there's kind of a line of plants. You leave your fans, you hang them, just like this picture shows. Straight down a line, you can use like coat hangers like this if you like, or you can literally just hang them over a wire. But straight down a line, um, for three to five days as you dry, that humidity in your room's gonna go way up because you're, you're letting all the moisture out of the plant as you cut it down. Um, try to remove as much of that humidity as possible in the, in the beginning. You just try to get it out of there as quickly as possible, remove as much as you can during the, the three to five days as you're drying stage. Um, on the fourth to fifth day, I would start to remove the fan leaves and allow the humidity to lessen at a slower pace. So I cr uh, this is where I begin creating a slow dry, and I actually begin curing here. It's, it's not really curing because I haven't trimmed or anything yet, but like this is an important stage to my leading into my cure. Your temp should always be as cold as you can get with your AC right now. I don't, not like a fucking refrigerator cold, but like crank your AC as your plants are drying. You want a cold room and get uh, and as cold as your AC can get. AC is great also for monitoring your humidity or removing some humidity in smaller rooms. You still need your airflow and you need ventilation, but the key here is stable temps and humidity. It's got to be stable. Um, this becomes a challenge as the plants dry and the humidity drops. You need to dry the plants at a 40 to 50 percent humidity until the stems break. A lot of guys have no concept of this. They'll literally just throw it out and let it dry, 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 take all the humidity out of the room and then it becomes bone dry in your closet upstairs or some shit. It's like, no, you need to dry your plants at 40 to 55% humidity, 40 to 50% humidity, and keep them in that zone as they dry. It takes longer to dry in that zone. But as they dry in that zone, they eventually they'll get to a point where their stems break. That's when you can buck your plant down. Take your five gallon, or your, your fan leaves off, and your, not your fan leaves, but your, um, take your buds off your stalks. And you take the buds off the stalks, and that's when you're gonna throw them into a five gallon food grade bucket or even better, a large glass jar, depending on the size of your crop. But um, the herb will be in different stages. It's like large nugs, like huge nugs on the line will be like way more moist because there's more moisture content within than the smaller nugs that are popcorns that are drying out quicker. So um, with the large nugs losing the moisture, the smaller nugs will be drier, but 48 hours later you begin to trim. So the idea is once you put these into the, your five gallon bucket or your jar, they're a little bit inconsistent and in, like the bigger nugs are a little bit wetter than the drier nugs, but as you put them in the jar, they're gonna even out that moisture across the entire bu jar bucket of, of cannabis. I say it takes about 48 hours for it to even up within those buckets. Again, you don't want it soaking wet at this stage. You want the stems to break, but you also wanna even up the cure among your big nugs to your smaller nugs so that it kind of balances out within the bucket or the jar. All right. Trimming, this is just real, this is the stage where I start trimming. Now that I have them in buckets, I'll literally start trimming this up. I'm not gonna teach you guys how to trim, it sucks ass. Just fucking get some scissors, get some gloves, trim your nugs. Don't leave crow's feet, it's my pet peeve, it's just stupid. 
keep your jars and buckets sealed until you trim. Don't like just open the bucket, let it sit there all day with the bucket open. That's you lose that moisture. You want to keep that 40, 40, 55 percent humidity content in that bucket the entire time. Don't let it just open it up and have your trim crew just fucking lose all your moisture in your buckets all day long. Clean your buckets, jars, tables, scissors frequently as most microbial failures occur at this stage using dirty equipment. Trust me, I've done a lot of commercial grow stuff. The failures are not from growing dirty plants. It's from dirty scissors and dirty buckets and dirty tabletops. And people don't clean the shit that they use to trim your weed. Your weed becomes dirty as fuck. So make sure they're cleaning their shit between every strain. You might even get butcher paper if you're in a commercial facility. Change the butcher paper on your table between every strain so you're not mixing your fucking last strain with this strain on the tabletop when you just dump it on there. And um, pay attention to what's happening to your bud as you trim it because that will identify where the microbial failure probably is occurring if you're having microbial issues. Separate the sweet leaf trim um, for extracting, obviously. So as you trim this shit up, this is the fire trim. This is like, this is the good good. Um, you can keep curing, your, keep curing your trim just the same as your cannabis. Just because it's trim doesn't mean throw it in a bag and it's done. The hash guys know if you cure your trim, they'll love you. All right. Uh, tips use isopropyl alcohol to clean your scissors. Also, hire only trusted help. Most robberies are inside job. It's a fact, dude. Like, uh, yeah, the almost every robbery is somebody that came to trim, somebody that saw how much weed is in there. At this time of the operation, they know what's going on, and it's almost always inside job. So if you're stressed and bugging out, doesn't mean go hire the fucking random dude down the street. It's probably not a good idea. Curing. So this is the most important stage to cannabis, in my opinion. So after you've trimmed it, again, the key to curing is controlling the temperature and humidity in the environment, keeping it stable. Swings in the temp in, the, in your cure actually browns your weed out, makes it smell like hay. If you got weed that smells like hay and it turns brown, actually, you've seen it physically turn brown or you went to a dispensary and looked in their jar, you're like, that weed's brown, dude. Like, why is that weed brown? Weed is brown because they had massive swings in their temperature and humidity during the cure process. You want a slow decline in the humidity. Not a straight to zero environment. Uh, the cure process takes place at about 40% humidity. So we're, we're still bringing it down, 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 down to about 40%. Under 40%, it stops curing. It doesn't restart. It never restarts. It becomes flash dried. It's harsh. It loses terps. It tastes nothing like it's supposed to. This is 90% of dispensary weed. Have you ever heard of Colorado Crunch or just gotten just shit fucking weed that tastes like dog shit? That's because they fucked up at this stage. You need to burp your buckets or jars as you uh, keep an even humidity over the next 10 days. This is another important point. THC begins degrading the moment of chop. Your two-year-old jar of headies will not be super potent. It's, it's going to be the opposite. Uh, fresh herb is stronger. Longer, cur longer cured is smoother. Too long is weak. So there's a, there's, a, there's a money zone in here where I think weed becomes the best. I think I talk about it later. It's about, about a 21-day cure is where I think competition herb should be submitted because that's like you've really got it dialed in to where it's perfect. If you got your, your moisture and your consistency perfect and you cured the jar perfectly out of the way to this point and you burped it a few times, about uh, 21 days is when the magic happens and it's like, holy fuck, this weed is incredible. Um, that's my personal preference. Pro tip on this, screw top lids for five gallon buckets are like a lifesaver. We use these a lot actually. Um, I don't know where you find them, but I Amazoned them. But uh, also use uh, glass jars um, if you can. Clean your jars and dishwashers to clean them out. One thing about buckets is, is like in plastic bags, is they, the trikes that are on your plant will rub up against the bucket or the plastic bag, and it will um, break them off. It's kind of like keeping your nuggets before you even get a chance to smoke them. It's a bad idea. Also, I hate, I didn't say this before, but I hate those drying racks where people have those circular drying racks that are all stacked up and shit, and it's like levels of drying racks. And it's sitting on a screen. You ever tried to like scoop nuggets out of there with like with your hand and like scoop it? All you're doing is keeping the shit out of your weed as you drag it across a fucking net. You know what I mean? It's this horrible fucking way to take care of cannabis. That's why it's much better to dry it, put it straight into a bucket. Another thing about buckets, don't use brand new fucking buckets. There's some off gassing that'll occur in there and it'll fuck up your cure of your fucking cannabis. It's uh, wash them bitches out. Uh, that's why I also say use food grade buckets. Um, moving on. Storage. Yeah, okay, it went quicker. So uh, storage, to, rem to um, keep your cannabis for long-term storage. 
remove the oxygen from it. You, the oxygen is what's fucking things up in this equation. So if you got a, a vacuum bag or whatever, that's a good idea. Store it in a dark, cool place. The best thing I think you can use is the vacuum pumps that actually have the jar lids, and you can suck the air out of the jars. Um, best thing you can do. Some people like to add like nitrogen at this stage, like a bag of chips. Like, or the, the canning guys will do this when they add nitrogen to the cans of weed. I think it's just stupid. I think it fucks the weed up. I'm, they swear it doesn't. Some chemists will tell you that. But I smoke plenty of canned nitrogen fucking cured weed, and it's dry and gross. So um, the idea here is keep that, keep that consistency of that moisture or that cure correctly, but then um, yeah, just remove the oxygen and keep it in a cool, dry, dark place. Uh, light degrades THC. And um, also, as I just said before, plastic bags and bugs will create friction with the trikes and on the buds, and it'll rip them off. My favorite herb is about 21-day cure. If you rush to market, you fuck up months of work. That's the honest-to-God fucking truth. If you rush it at this point, you fucked up everything you did. Um, avoid humidity. There's a tip. Avoid humidity packs and jars. Um, it, just putting those humidity packs in your jars or bags or whatever, it affects the taste. I can taste that shit. If you, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. If you got weed that's just getting old and old and old, and you're losing that moisture content, and you know maybe maybe add one if you need to, but don't be like, it's part of my SOP. I put one of these in here at the start of every cure. It's like no, save that shit for a last resort if you got old old weed. But don't be adding humidity packs and shit to your jars. It's just gonna fuck up your taste. Um, this is some of the shit I talked about today. Recommended equipment and products. I use age-old nutrients, grow and bloom. I've been using them fucking forever. I've also tried everything else and went back to these guys. Uh, it's not paid. They don't pay me. I just like their shit. It's cheap as fuck. You'll grow way better weed that tastes awesome. Fucking try it. Write me a DM later and say thanks for switching me to age-old, dude, because the shit's awesome. Um, what I grow in, earthworm castings and age-old. Or, or I'm sorry, earthworm castings, 20% uh, earthworm castings and pro mix. And my lights that I technically use right now and like, my favorite lights on the market right now, is a 315 CMH for veg and a 1000 watt DE for flower. Uh, these are Illuminar, who sponsors the podcast, so um, check them out. But this is the shit I use. That's how I grow. If you, you know, obviously there's parts of it that's more in depth than that. We didn't really get into cloning or pests or any of that stuff. But uh, at the same time, just keep it simple as fuck. Follow the simple process. And the most important part, I think, is your dry cure harvest, uh, storage, like that's where you find out what the weed tastes like that you grew. You might be a good grower, but can't cure or, 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 or care for your product after the fact. You don't even know if it's a good pheno or not because you fucked it up in the dry. Uh, you might, you know, think of all the gems that have been thrown away out there because people don't know how to dry and cure. Like, oh, this one sucks. Like, it might not have sucked. You just don't know how to dry and cure. All right, dudes. That's a... Uh... That's it. That was like a 15-page PowerPoint that I typed up. Let me go back to my ugly mug. There you go. That's how to grow weed like Dark Horse. Anybody has any questions? We have about 10 minutes. Airflow. What? Airflow. Airflow? Somebody was asking about airflow. What, what specifically the question about airflow do you have? You want to exchange your air in your room about seven times a minute, I think, is the rule. Don't quote me on that. Google it so you know, I'm not giving you bad info. But in a cannabis grow room, I think you want to exchange air about seven times a minute. So also need to learn what cubic feet is. So do the length times the width times the height of your room. Add all that up. Find out what your cubic feet is. We look at the CFM on a fan, cubic feet per minute. Do the math. If it's, you know, so, so and so, a couple hundred, you're going to need uh, to exchange it seven times a minute. If it's, uh, let's say, 200, uh, CF, uh, 200 cubic feet of room, you need to exchange it seven times a minute. You need a 1,400 CFM fan. That's the math. Just do the math. Um, if you got freezing cold air, try to warm it up. If you got super hot air, try to cool it down. Any other questions? What input can I put in the ProMix to bump the terps up? Guano. Guano. Terp be, terps all day on the guano, dude. That's, I mean, it's my secret sauce. Best way to store pollen. There is no best way to store pollen, in my opinion. You got to use it fresh. People, we've used, we've stored it, we've used it. It becomes about thirty percent viable in the best case scenario. So, I don't like it. I like to save male fathers and recreate pollen drops every time I need fresh pollen. Um, but the best way, I guess, to answer your question officially, 
some sort of cryo freezer, super free, super frozen, deep, deeply frozen pollen with no moisture. Desiccants. I don't fuck with them a lot in desiccants. Um, it, better for outdoor growing in super hot places, but um, I don't know. Caesar, you want to speak on, grab a mic or something, you want to speak on what the hash boys told you about it? Specifically what? You said something about the, it got better yields in hash with them using it or? No, that was silica. Oh, silica, my bad. So should I mention that real quick? Yeah, go ahead, since you're on the mic. So uh, somebody told me that, uh, I know that they grow pretty good weed. I love their weed locally. Um, They told me that uh, since they've been using silica for their products, specifically the power size silica, that uh, they've been getting higher hash yields uh, cause silica, if you know what silica does, it pretty much strengthens the cell walls, uh, power side, I guess it's special enough to strengthen up the cell wall of, I guess it li- literally everything in the plant, making it so, uh, trichome heads that would usually wash off and break easily in the, uh, the wash, uh, are a little bit more sturdier so they won't just like dissolve into the water. So you'll definitely get a higher yield when it comes to uh, hash if you're looking for ways to increase yields in the hash department yeah so just to reiterate what he was saying is basically the hash guys came to us and said you know this power size shit is making the the heads stay on the plant longer and giving us better hash and better returns on hash and we're like what well let's fuck, let's fuck with that a little bit so there's just a little new tip that we're playing with but uh yeah that's new new science to us auto trip Auto trimmers. I've never actually used one, man. I've seen them at like every trade show. Those bonsai guys, they got this scissors, like going crazy, and like apparently they won't cut you if you hit it. But uh, no, um, I've trimmed many hours. Here's a story about this tattoo. So I got this tattoo of Hawaii. Oh. There you go. Maybe you can see it. Is it right? I got this tattoo of Hawaii on my forearm so that. I would trim with the scissors in my left hand and hold the nugget in my right hand and I would trim and I'd be looking down at my tattoo, which is of Hawaiian Islands, being like, just keep trimming, just keep trimming, you can fucking go to Hawaii after this crop, go to Hawaii after this crop, which was something I did a lot. Like I used to just fuck, it was like my only motivation was to like just keep trimming. So as far as trimming, I got no real tips other than it sucks and find motivation that at the end you get to do something cool as fuck. What do I have to keep flavors in the weed is tasty and burn smooth? I'm not sure what you're referring to. You're talking about having your weed tasty and burn smooth. That's uh, about flushing, flushing out all nutrients. So you get a good white ash, um, just a real clean smoke. But um, yeah, I'm not sure the detail of your question, but essentially if you're asking how do you get that clean flavor, again, organics, I think soil, soil helps a lot, and then a good flush. MX, I'm not sure if it'll work in DWC, this, the, the powder. It's a good question, but I would assume it would, but I'm not. It's such a fast-moving system that I don't know if it's going to be readily available to plants. At least on the, I guess it would come through on another pass, but yeah, it's, I'm not sure. Is it better to add microbes during feed or water only? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think, I, I think I've never... Th- subconsciously thought about it but when i water i'm giving just water 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 and microbes is typically something i'm adding to the soil i don't really add it to my water i'll top top dress with it can i mention something about pollen real quick yeah caesar caesar's got a comment about pollen so for whoever was asking about uh, storing pollen, there was this one article that uh, somebody sent me. I'm not too sure exactly if uh, pine pollen, like from pine trees and uh, cannabis share any similarity besides them being pollen. But there was a study about uh, somebody drying out the pollen, uh, deep freezing it, and they were able to use that pollen 15 years later. So, I mean, I guess it all depends on how you store it. Just make sure there's zero moisture and it's super cold. Yeah, it can be done. I would just say I've failed miserably at it several several attempts. Several attempts. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, 
thoughts on General Mills salt line. I don't really like anyone's salt line, not to bash General Mills, but I just don't like growing with salts. I think you get good yields. Like it's it'll it'll bang for you, and they'll be photogenic, and people will think you're the shit. But then you'll pass me a nugget, and I'll be like, ugh. Like I, I mean, I won't know it till I smoke it. Don't get me wrong; it'll even smell good and shit. But then I'll take a rip and be like, whoa, dude, it doesn't taste organic. And I'm not even that like heady. I'm telling you, it's just that obvious. If you've really smoked good, clean, pure organic cannabis, and then you go to like a salt based line, the same cut, you'll be like, whoa, what the fuck happened here? Different plant, totally. We the week we stop using PowerSight. Honestly, we just started fucking with it, so I don't want to come on here with the facts on it yet until I have a good tutorial, or I shouldn't say tutorial, but have a good a vast amount of experience myself. But um, yeah, we're just using it early right now, early in um, veg and early in flower, like really early. But if I would say cut it out, I think it would be after maybe week three. But yeah, I'm not really. I try not to add shit in flour. That's sort of the p point of my presentation also is like, you know, see how simple that was? I didn't like refrain from telling you guys everything. I'm not joking. That's all I fucking do. Like some of these guys can probably come out here to their podcast and they'll tell you fucking three hours of super techie shit or whatever and go on with 37 products and the chemistry behind all of it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dudes, I've been growing weed for almost 20 fucking five years this way and it's good and people like it and... That's all I can say about it is like, I've also tried all the new shit and I'm back to this way. So, um, uh, it's, I honestly didn't leave very much out. I had a little casting or I'm sorry, a little guano sometimes and like home grows. I don't even use guano in commercial grows anymore. All that Skittles and purple starburst and everything else that's on fire across Colorado right now. We're not using guanos. I use age old dude. It's simple. Like y'all should be paying me thousands of dollars consultant. I'm telling all my competition how to grow better weed. Just fucking stop putting all that bullshit in there. And fucking grow simple, under 1100 ppm weed, organic, yield less, taste better, get paid more. All right. I think we're at the end, folks. They're probably about to boot you off of IG. So with that said, um, I think we're going to wrap it up. I'll, I'm going to end it with a contest this week. If I have time, hopefully you IG fuckers see it. Caesar wrote this out. So we're going to give away one pack a day for seven days. Let me go to free shit. It's free. We are going to give away one pack a day for seven days. All you have to do is follow these three simple rules. One, follow Dark Horse Genetics on Instagram. Two, make a post about Dark Horse Genetics live. Three, use hashtag Dark, or sorry, DHG live giveaway. DHG live giveaway. I'm going to search that every day for one week for seven days in a row. I'm going to pick one person who made a post and use DHG live giveaway. And I'm going to give you a pack of seeds. One a day, seven packs. Um, also next week, I don't think we're going to be here, dudes. Um, we might do one a day early, but Caesar and I are heading up to Puerto Rico soon. We pass our, our COVID tests. So no dark horse live next week, possibly a rerun or possibly a Tuesday show. But, uh, yeah, everybody, that's a wrap. That's how to grow weed like dark horse. We'll catch you guys next week or the week after maybe something, but, uh, peace everybody. Little power gay fish come sit on my shoulder today. Little gay power fish sit on my shoulder today and make me a fried shrimpy dish with some soy sauce, baby. As the beat drops, super, super fried. Super fried egg roll, triple fry fry rice, triple fry rice, baby. Two for one egg roll, super triple fry rice, triple fry rice, baby. Don't forget the soy sauce, chan chan chan. There's my gay fish song, dudes. What? <laughs>